Hi. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, I really, I'm like so blown away by how many people there are here. We could never do something like this in Canada. Um, and thank you so much for bringing me over. This is my first time in the UK, and I really want to move here now. So. <laughs> I've been here for like four days. And I'm like, okay, see you later, baby. Uh, uh, I, I wanted to talk about authenticity today. It's something I've been thinking about a lot this year in general. I feel like we're currently living in kind of a culture of fakery. So we support and reward virtue signaling and we punish those who are real and who tell the truth, people who have integrity, people who insist on making political arguments based on critical thinking and what's right and rational and ethical instead of based on what's politically correct or popular. So I have like a rather overzealous commitment to authenticity that sometimes gets me into trouble. Uh, and definitely that's played a really big role in my insistence on in pushing back against gender identity ideology and legislation. So I know that I have friends and acquaintances and friends of friends and random internet, internet followers with self-righteous opinions who think maybe I should back off of this or who claim I'm being mean or unempathetic because I continue to operate in reality rather than in the fantasy land that we're told is the new normal, where black, black is white, up is down, and men are women. But I see no empathy for women and girls on the part of trans activists, that is to say, those who are pushing gender identity ideology and legislation. What I see is bullying, threats, ostracization, and a misogynist backlash against the feminist movement and much of the work it's accomplished over the years. I see no empathy for women who are now being forced to compete against male athletes in sport, essentially rendering women's sport non-existent as they can no longer compete on fair ground if forced to compete against men. I see no empathy for the female athletes speaking out against this reprehensible trend. Instead, they're being smeared and threatened. I see no empathy for the lesbians being bullied out of their own events and communities, as the LGBTQ++++, whatever it is now, movement does nothing to support them, and in fact seems instead to support the men who are pushing them around and hurling verbal abuse at them, simply for asserting that lesbians are females who are attracted to other females, not heterosexual men interested in playing around with makeup. <laughs> <laughs> we held an event in Vancouver earlier this month uh, addressing the issue of gender identity in kids. And our venue, the Croatian Cultural Center, received so many threats they had to file a police report. They had to hire their own security team, and they had to bring in the Vancouver Police Department to keep protesters off the property. And for once, they didn't blame us, the women and the feminists, for the threats of violence sent their way, and rather asked with disbelief how it was that the trans activists were accused, accusing us of being hateful while simultaneously verbally abusing and threatening violence against the staff who like, had no skin in this game at all. They didn't pick by or were completely not aware of this issue even existed before them. Um, somewhere between 150 and 200 protesters showed up and stood outside with signs saying things like support trans youth, love and solidarity, love trans kids, be careful who you hate, it might be someone you love, and of course love wins. Uh, all of this branding around love has been incredibly successful, of course, seeing as we, the women fighting for women's rights, people fighting for the truth, those of us who insist on acknowledging that biology is real, that females and males are real things, and that no, there's no such thing as a female penis, have been painted as hateful, intolerant, and bigoted, despite the facts that we're the only ones who are engaging, or trying to engage in any case, in respectful, civil, rational debate and discussion. And despite the fact that we are the ones concerned with male violence against women and how gender identity ideology and legislation will hurt women, 
and how it will hurt kids as well, who are now being sent down a path towards hormone, hormones and surgery that will destroy their bodies permanently simply because they don't conform to sexist gender stereotypes. Yet, of course, it's the trans activists who have positioned themselves as caring, loving, politically correct, and us as cruel and intolerant. As I was leaving the venue after the event, uh, there were some stragglers left behind, and they screamed at me that I had blood on my hands, which of course I don't, and which of course is incredibly ironic, considering how many times I've been told that I should be murdered on account of my belief that you can't change sex, and that it's not possible to be born in the wrong body. I see no empathy in trans activism for the girls who lose scholarships and opportunities to boys who can easily beat them in athletic competitions. I see no empathy for the women and girls who don't feel comfortable with naked men in their change rooms at the pool. I see no empathy for youth being put on hormones that will have a lasting impact on them, including permanent sterilization, all to accommodate adults who don't want to see trans ideology questioned under any circumstances. I see no empathy for the women and their children who will have nowhere to turn if their local transition house is defunded on account of a woman-only policy. I see no empathy for Christy Hanna, who is a Toronto woman and a survivor of sexual assault who had to leave her room at Palmerston House, a shelter for recovering addicts, because she was made to share a room with a man and didn't feel safe. I see no empathy for the 14 female estheticians who were asked to give a male a Brazilian bikini wax <laughs> then dragged to court when they declined, saying they only offered the service to women, and I see no empathy for the girl who allegedly predated on, I have to say allegedly, who is being protected, this man, who is being protected by a very liberal, very progressive society that's choosing to put male feelings and desires and fetishes above all else under the guise of inclusion, thanks to trans activism. Women and girls are being told they can't have boundaries, that they can't say no to men, and this is what we're told it means to choose love, and this is what we're told is feminism. Trans activism says women may not define their own bodies as female, that we may not have our own rights, services, and spaces that exclude men. It says gender stereotypes are real and innate, that the female body is a social construction, <laughs> it says that woman is based only on an adherence to or an affinity towards femininity, something feminism has fought for years. So much of what women fought for over the past century is being rolled back, and progressives are insisting we all shut up and take it because it's nice, and of course women must always be nice, even if it means putting our lives, autonomy, safety, opinions, and rights aside. Nothing about the trans movement is progressive, and nothing about it is feminist. I brought up authenticity earlier, partly because I'm sick to death of this social media-based culture wherein we put forth personas we believe our audience will like, modeling perfect faces, lives, and thoughts, which I find incredibly boring and depressing, but also because I see this devaluing of authenticity as having an incredibly destructive impact on political discourse. And certainly it's manifested itself power, powerfully in the trans movement. I don't believe that, aside from a few exceptionally delusional or troubled people, that a majority of the population believes it's possible to change sex. I don't believe that all these so-called progressives look at a man who insists that we call him she and believe he's literally a woman. I don't believe all these people claiming love wins and insisting women be more empathetic as they give up all of their rights and spaces while these activists felt vile, hateful insults and threats at us are really very loving at all. I think people are not telling the truth. I think they're repeating mantras and going along with ideas and policies in order to appease their Facebook friends. I think they value social status a lot and are willing to give up ethics and truth in order to be liked. And I think it's pathetic. <laughs> I 
think that these people are throwing women under the bus, and I think they're even selling themselves out in the process, knowing that they're spouting lies for virtual cookies and using us all to fake politics. And I refuse to be used as some kind of stepping stool for an empty-headed, cowardly hipster. <laughs> For extremely privileged people who have fetishized oppression but have no idea what marginalized groups actually face and deal with on a daily basis, because it's certainly not misgendering, <laughs> that's keeping people more vulnerable, who can't even be bothered to read, to listen, or think before announcing boldly that women with actual politics, who actually understand history, who are bold enough to take a stand against actual bigotry and oppression should be silenced, punched, or even killed. The wrong side of history is an embarrassing place to be, but unfortunately I worry that by the time these people realize how much damage they've caused by going along with such a destructive trend, it will be too late. Um, what does give me hope is all of you. This massive and growing movement of people standing up and saying no, we won't take this silently and sitting down. This grand swell of people insisting on telling the truth, despite the fact that we do lose friends, jobs, social status, and sometimes safety, we're doing so. But the more we keep doing it, the more we'll join us. Thank you.